In our previous video, we discussed an overview of broadcast receivers in Android. In this video, we're going to implement a broadcast receiver in code. So first, I have the project that I've been working through in this video series, and of course, I'm committing and pushing this up to GitHub, and I'll make a separate commit for this video so you can see just what I've done here. What I need to do, if you remember the previous video, is the first thing is make a new class. So we'll say Java class, and we will call this one Synchronize Receiver. And the superclass is the important part. For the superclass, we're going to extend Broadcast Receiver. Note that it auto-completes for me in Android Studio. Everything else looks great. I choose OK. Of course, add the file to get. Now, notice it's going to help me out here because it gives me a red line immediately. And when I hold Alt and press Enter, it says Implement Methods. Now, why is this? This is because Broadcast Receiver is an abstract class. An abstract class can, can define abstract methods. And then anything whose subclass is that abstract class must implement those methods. If you saw the previous video on the template method design pattern, where I, I, I had a menu and we were taking off the menu option for the screen that the user is currently on, very similar approach, also use that template method design pattern. So here we're creating a subclass of the abstract class broadcast receiver. If that last minute doesn't make a whole lot of sense, don't worry, just do what I'm doing right here. Implement methods. And that gives us our friend called onReceive. Now onReceive is the method that is invoked when our broadcast receiver gets one of these external stimulus, or in other words, an intent. Now we get two things in here. One is the context which tells us about our program, its private directory, things like that. We need this because this will give us the ability to do, do things like raise a toast if something happens, which is how we're going to test out this broadcast receiver. The intent here, now this is interesting. The intent is the environmental stimuli that has triggered this broadcast receiver. So the examples of intents could be connected to Bluetooth, disconnected to Bluetooth, low battery power, low storage space, uh, connected to power, connected to Wi-Fi, so on and so forth. We don't know which one it is, though, so we have to interrogate it a little bit. We'll start with by just saying, uh, find out who called us. So for that, we say intent dot get action. Okay, and this essentially is the action constant that called us. Now, what could an action constant be? Well, if you remember from the last video, there's the top secret file called broadcast underscore actions, which is part of the Android SDK. And this contains a list of a lot of the intents or action constants rather that can trigger a broadcast receiver. So essentially, this is what we're looking for. Now, we don't necessarily have to spell out this entire string. It will be a string and this would work, but many of these strings have constant variables in the class called intent, which makes life a little easier on us. In other words, just take a look at what I'm about to do. Control Alt V saves this string to a variable. We'll go ahead and call it action. And once again, that string is what we're represent representing from this broadcast actions uh, file here. So who called us? Okay, now, um, is it power? So watch the comparison I do here. If action dot equals because remember we are comparing strings very important uh, when comparing strings we're not going to use the equal sign or the double equal sign we're going to use the method called equals and now inside of this i say intent dot action power disconnected uh, so we have an if test and we're simply comparing the action constant that's in this variable with a known action constant called intent dot action power disconnected I will warn you, line 18 looks way more complicated than it really is. We have a string here, and if I mouse over this intent action power disconnected, what is that actually? Or I can probably, do, oh, there we go. Take a look. Do you see that that's a constant, a public static final, and its value is android.intent.action.action power disconnected. I do a quick search of the top secret file, and guess what we have? Android.intent.action that action power disconnected as a string. So this constant here is simply representing that string. And if power disconnected is what triggered us to be here, then this action is going to have that same value. These two are going to be the same. And then we can say, we can do, you know, normally what I would do in this case is maybe stop a synchronization process or go to a power save mode, a lower low power mode, maybe dim the screen, something like that. But for our purpose, I can just do a toast.make text. 
Uh, typically, I would not do a toast from a broadcast receiver, by the way, because you are showing the user a message. And these things could, depending on what you're triggering, these things could go on and off very frequently and could really uh, annoy the user. So good for debugging, but beyond that, I, I would be careful about using it. The first thing it needs is a context, which guess what? Here's our context. So let's say context. The second thing it needs is a message. So we'll say uh, low power mode. Okay. And then we need a duration on how long we want to keep this toast up. So I'll say toast length long. And then finally, we need to show it. And there we go. Now we know we don't like putting text directly in code. So what I will do is I will put my cursor over there, uh, alt enter, and then say extract string resource to put this in. There we go. To put it in strings XML so it's easier to internationalize. Now let's do an else if, and let's say action dot equals, and we'll say intent, very similar to above, dot action power connected. And you see, and sorry, I did that a little bit quickly, but if you take a look, there are a lot of these constants in their values. That can give you a good hint if you're looking for something like airplane mode changed. That's a good one too. Airplane mode means you're not going to have Wi-Fi. You're not going to have cellular network. In some phones, you'll have GPS and others you will not. So you might want to disable certain buttons and prevent the user from having a bad experience where the alternative would be the user presses a button and either the app doesn't do what it's supposed to because there's no Wi-Fi or uh, the app crashes even worse. So be a bit proactive. Think of how you can use these broadcast receivers to give your user a better experience. Nonetheless, we go to Action Power Connected and I'm going to have a similar toast make text as I have above. Just do a little paste here and then we're going to say burn power. Now I shouldn't do that. I always say uh, I always say, um, uh, uh, don't put a message there as a joke because you will forget about it. So uh, let's make it uh, uh, enhanced mode for lack of anything else. And I'll go ahead, I'll do the old trick. Alt enter, extract string resource, enhanced mode, like so. So we put that in strings XML. Now one more thing we need to do is we need to register the synchronized receiver. We used to do that in the Android manifest, but we don't anymore. I don't recall the exact Android version, but it was around Marshmallow or Aureo where they changed it to something you actually do in code. So I'm going to go to our very first activity, which is GPS a plant, and I'm going to go to the onCreate method. In here, I'm going to declare and register our broadcast receiver. Okay, so we just make an object like anything else. We'll say uh, broadcast broadcast receiver and then we'll call this one br equals new uh, synchronized receiver okay there we go looking good uh, call the constructor as we normally would do now we need to uh, add an intent filter to indicate which uh, intents we are interested in receiving pardon a few spelling errors there so if you remember this animation from a prior video the intent filter is what's saying I'm interested in the light blue circle, I'm interested in the purple circle, but I am not interested in the red triangle or the yellow hexagon. So an intent filter is, is just a filter, literally, and it's also a class in Java. So we can say intent filter, and then we'll call this one filter. We uh, equals new intent filter. Now, how do we say that we want the yellow, uh, how do we say we want the blue circle and we want the purple circle well what we'll do for that is we'll say on the next line filter dot add action and then we'll say intent dot remember this guy dot action power connected so we want to listen for action power connected and then filter dot add action okay and then intent and remember this constant again we saw this not too long ago so we'll say um, action power Disconnected. There we go. So power connected, power disconnected. Uh, and then finally, we say this dot register receiver. So put these things together. Now take a look at what the, what the register receiver accepts. It accepts one object of type broadcast receiver and a different object of type intent filter. We've just created a broadcast receiver object. We've just created an intent filter object. So this will be easy to do. So broadcast receiver BR. And then, whoops, looks like it, it's hiding there. And then filter, just like so. So we're putting these all together. We're telling the Android application about these items. 
Now that we've done all that, let's go ahead and try some things out. So I have set a breakpoint in my synchronized receiver, and I've started the emulator. Now, one note with broadcast receivers and intents, you cannot simulate all of them in this emulator that we see here. Uh, it's going to vary based on the Android version, but I know you, you couldn't do Wi-Fi for a while, and some things are harder to do demo than others. The reason I chose power is this one actually is easy to demonstrate in the emulator. But first, what if you have one that you can't demonstrate in the emulator? In that case, I recommend using a real device and doing some debugging with that actual device. But nonetheless, power is one that's relatively easy. So I'm going to change uh, charger connection to AC power. And let's take a look. And sure enough, look at what happened. Our intent has hit. You see the, the breakpoint that I set? The blue line is there. So I choose F8. And now let's look very closely. If I mouse over action, what do you see? You see the action that we've received is a string android.intent.action.action power connected. And let's mouse over this constant that we have looked at before, but guess what? It's the exact same string. So when I choose F8, we know that power is not disconnected. When I choose F8 one more time, we'll see that power is connected. I'm going to choose F8 and very quickly move the emulator back over. Just a moment, there we go, F8, and then move the emulator back over. Whoa, didn't do what I wanted. Reason being, I want you to see this toast. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose F9, and then very quickly bring this over, and you see the enhanced mode toast appears. Let me take off this breakpoint and bring the emulator back. This way we don't have that lag time. So I'm going to switch to none, and you see low power mode appears as the toast. I switch back to AC charger, and you'll see enhanced mode appears. So you see that our device is now able to react to this external stimulus. And think of all the potential that gives us. If you take a look at that top secret file of intents that broadcast receivers can receive, you can really write a whole lot of programming logic with broadcast receivers alone. So I'm interested to hear how you've used broadcast receivers. If you have any thoughts or tips or good ideas on how to use them, leave them in the comments. I'd love to see it. Thank you.